The time has come to tell the masses that Jesus Christ, our Savior, lives. Of how He loves us like the Father, and of the Spirit that He. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church's worship service for this third Sunday after the Epiphany. Uh, if you were with us last week, you would have heard me mention that I think there are five weeks after the Epiphany of us wearing, or me at least, wearing green, and with the green up in the chancel. Uh, I, I checked that since last time, so I'll have you know. But it's actually only four weeks of green, but there are five weeks after the Epiphany. But uh, because the last Sunday after the Epiphany is Transfiguration Sunday, which will be back in white right before Lent. So we have uh, two more weeks of green after this, and then we'll be moving to white and then to the purple of Lent. And so the, the reason for the changing of the colors is so we see the different seasons throughout the year. And, uh, and I guess one of the joys of having our worship services online is that you can go back and, and see how the, how the chancel area has changed, how, how I have changed, <laughs> and uh, um, just th as we move through the different seasons of the church. Um, and as I mentioned, we are getting close to, to Ash Wednesday and then Lent, which will be purple. And, and how we're going to do that, um, I mean, I'll keep you posted as to how we'll do Ash Wednesday and, and I guess the other services of Lent and stuff. But maybe we'll try to do something different this year. Um, but uh, seeing that it's almost Lent, I mean, if you remember, this pandemic started uh, in Lent last year. And so it's been almost a year of us worshiping in, in this way, uh, not in person, but uh, online like this. Uh, but we are reminded that we are still loved. We are still connected to each other through these series of tubes called the Internet. And we are joined together in the spirit and we are thankful for that. We're thankful for the technologies that we have available to us that we're able to do this. Um, speaking of technologies, being able to do this without being together, I do want to thank my wife Winnie for being here, helping me putting the words up on the screen for you all. Uh, thank Justin, Susan, and Byrne for providing the music for us, and to Jean for providing the, the readings and the psalm responses and the prayers, as you'll hear later on in the service. Um, if this is your first time joining us, uh, you can pause the video and just take time to read the description above this video on our website or description below this video if you're on YouTube and have uh, a few instructions as to how uh, you can have the most, uh, uh, the, 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 a fuller, <laughs> a fuller at home worship experience. So you can pause the video, re read that, and if you want to follow those instructions, sure. If not, uh, you can continue on with the video and we will uh, still worship together because the words that you need to know will be on your screen with your, with your responses in bold. And so now I ask you to, to assume a posture that is conducive for worship, whether it be standing or sitting or, or kneeling for some of you, um, as we quiet ourselves, still our hearts and minds, and be prepared for worship. Let's just take a moment. We begin with the thanksgiving for baptism. On this day when we gather while apart, we give thanks for the salvation that comes from God, reminded to us through these waters of baptism. Although this water is just ordinary water from the tap, it is the symbol of water that we are giving thanks for. You know, the symbol of water as an element that we all commonly need and thus brings us together. The symbol of a, of a substance that draws us in with its refreshing allure. The symbol of a liquid that gives and provides us all with life. 
And so we take the symbol of water, this symbol of togetherness, community, and life, and we use it to create another symbol, the symbol of the cross on our foreheads. But this is a symbol of service, humility, and love. Together they, they mark us, empower us, and call us forth into the streams of God's justice for which we give thanks both now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. We'll now sing our gathering hymn, Lord of glory, you have bought us. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the inclusive love of God, and the welcoming fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let's pray. O Lord, we know that the present form of this world is passing away. May our focus always be on you, that we might be driven to serve humbly, love wholly, and walk justly in your ways through the strength and wisdom of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 62, verses 5 to 12, which we will read responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 to 31. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, Let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now sing our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord.
Let's pray before we begin. Speak to us this day, O God, that we might hear and heed to Jesus' call to follow him and be his disciples, serving you and neighbor for the sake of the justice that you will upon the world. Amen. So I don't know how many of you watched the U.S. presidential inauguration this past Wednesday. You know, I missed most of it because time zone, and I'm not huge on watching these things anyway. I mean, I'd even watched the, the inauguration of the brother-in-law of my brother-in-law's cousin 16 years ago. So I don't think it'd be fair for me to watch the inauguration of someone with whom I have zero famili familial relationship that I know of, at least. <laughs> Either case, I feel like I caught the best part of the whole ceremony anyway. I mean, if, you, if you watched it, you might know what I mean. And no, it wasn't the actual swearing-in part. I, I totally missed that. It wasn't the, the musical performances by J-Lo and Lady Gaga. I missed those too, although I heard they were pretty good. And it wasn't even that part where, where Garth Brooks tried to leave after singing Amazing Grace, but everyone kept shaking his hand and hugging him. So it took him like 15 minutes to get out of there. Uh, that was good stuff. No, the best part for me was when poet Amanda Gorman read her poem, The Hill We Climb. And don't worry, I never heard of her before either. But I looked her up and, and now, like I'm sure all of you, know her well. <laughs> she was the first and youngest poet person to, to ever be named National Youth Poet Laureate in 2017, a title that I admit I also never heard of, but after hearing her on Wednesday, I would say she totally deserves it. I mean, she's 23 years old now, and she totally stole the show for me. I mean, seriously. At 23, I was still spending most of my time hanging out with my friends, working on my Super Smash Brothers skills, and she is writing, reciting her poetry for the president and the whole country and beyond. And if you didn't see her recite her poem or read it online, I suggest you do so because it truly was spectacular. One line in particular that, that really caught me was near the beginning of the poem as I was still trying to figure out who this person was. And she said, We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And norms and notions of, just, of, of what just is isn't always justice. What just is, isn't always justice. Profound, yes. But where do we go from here? You know, I'm sure a lot of people who, who sure, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who, who still feel that the election that culminated in this inauguration was unjust. I'm sure there are a lot of people who felt the past four years were unjust. I'm sure there are a lot of people who, who feel like anything that doesn't go in their own specific way is unjust. So what is justice then? It's like the definition is in the eye of the beholder. Now, some would say that justice is, is their own brand of, of politics and everyone else is just wrong. Others say that justice is, is when evil is abolished, at least the evil that, that plagues them. Others still might take it a step further and say that justice is when those who hurt or harm uh, us get hurt or harmed back, hopefully by our own hand, but we're happy with whatever karma decides to play itself out on that. And I don't think we'd like to admit it, but we probably believe the latter to be true. I mean, justice, for most of us, is when those we don't like get what's coming to them. And we believe this in the schoolyard, that's for sure. We see this in the movies and other forms of media that we love to consume. We read about this in the story of Jonah, part of which we get in today's readings. 
And this is a, a, a totally familiar story. I mean, everyone knows about Jonah and the whale. And the problem is that if, if we heard of it, we were probably told that the moral of the story was to not run away from God's call or else you might just get swallowed up by a huge, undetermined sea creature. And that just seems to make sense. As Jonah did something wrong, disobeying God and running away, and, and something bad happens to Jonah, getting eaten alive. And justice, right? But that isn't what the story is about, and that isn't the justice that I'm talking about. Now, the story is more about the struggle inside Jonah to be able to let go of his definition of justice. See, God told Jonah to, to go to Nineveh and preach salvation to them. And we might know that Nineveh was, was just this bad city that Jonah didn't like, but we might not have known that Nineveh was actually the capital of Assyria, which is one of the sworn enemies of Israel. In fact, you might remember that Israel actually fell to the hands of the Assyrians before the Babylonians took over all of them. So it wasn't that Jonah just didn't like the city like how we might not like, uh, I don't know, Spuzzum BC or something. <laughs> No, it was a deep-seated cultural and national rivalry and hatred. It was like how, how U.S. And, and Russia were at odds back when Rocky IV came out. So for God to call Jonah there and try to get them to repent? And maybe you can see what a, a difficult task this would have been for Jonah. It wasn't even so much that Jonah didn't want the Ninevites to be saved. It was more that he knew that God would be gracious and save them. He just didn't want any part of it. Because in Jonah's eyes, those darn Ninevites deserved what was coming to them. I remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, that would seem like a walk in the park compared to what God should have lined up for Nineveh. Justice, right? And we want the little guy to win. We want Jonah to be able to smite his enemies. We want Rocky Balboa to beat Ivan Drago. But God has a different idea of what justice is. You know, instead of dishing out punishment and smite, God answers with grace and mercy and invites us along for the ride. This isn't easy. It wasn't easy for Jonah to, to watch his enemies repent and be saved despite his best efforts to not help them. It wasn't easy for the, for the Corinthian church to not act out of, out of spite and, and superiority over each other. And it wasn't easy for the disciples to not just say no to Jesus when he called them to fish for fish no more, but to fish for people instead. And it isn't easy. It's not easy for us to not wish harm on our enemies. It's not easy for us to want to get back at those who hurt us. It's not easy for us to dish out our own brand of justice, the kind that, that could and likely would lead to violence, division, and pain. The poet Amanda Gorman had a lot of good points in her poem that she read at the inauguration. But before her big finale, she hinted at how we can achieve this justice. She said, we close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside, lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. And this Right there is God's idea of justice. It isn't vengeance. It isn't evening the score. It isn't about harming those who have harmed you. It's about putting aside differences, laying down our tools and, and tendencies for destruction, and learning how to love those we hate. But how on earth 
do we do that? Well, Jesus showed us through his ministry and through the calling of his disciples. We are called to serve the other. We look at their needs. We see their hurts. And we realize that we aren't all that different after all. And we are all broken, damaged, and fallen. We all need community, support, and love. We are all in need of a Savior. And thanks be to God, for we get one. In spite of all the stuff that is going on in the world with this pandemic that has taken so much from us, all the political turmoil we see in our country and elsewhere, all the personal problems we all face in our own lives, God continues to reside with us, abide in us, and be among us through Christ in the Spirit and empowers us to see and feel that love and in turn reflect it unto others. But this is the promise given to us. This is the hope that we have in a greater future. This is the justice that we are called to, that we might see each other as God does, with eyes of grace, mercy, and love. So in this season after the Epiphany, may we see and feel the Spirit residing in our neighbors, friends, and even enemies, that we might together strive for the divine justice that we've been called to serve through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day, Canticle of the Turning.
all of God's people called to justice. Let's confess the Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Call to live in God's love and justice, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Each petition will end with, In your mercy, O Lord, and you are invited to respond with, Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O Lord, Hear our prayer. O God, for you we wait in silence, for you are our hope, our rock, and our salvation and stronghold. In you we shall not be shaken. May we always lean on your strength, that pursuit of justice be lined with your love and grace. In your mercy, O Lord, Hear our prayer. O God, you are our deliverance and our honor, our strong rock and refuge. In you we take the light and we draw out wisdom and truth, teaching us the value that you give to each of us as your ch own children. May our ministries reflect this gracious truth that those whom we come in contact with be touched by your welcome and love. We pray especially for our neighboring faith communities, our partner Anglican Church of Canada, our Bishop Greg, assistant to the Bishop Kathy, and National Bishop Susan, and our companion churches of the BC Synod. In particular, we pray for Faith Lutheran Church in Kelowna and their pastor, Brian Crucial, and Gloria Day Lutheran Church in North Vancouver and their interim pastor, Vida Yeglenas. In your mercy, O Lord. Hear our prayer. O God, our trust is in you always, for you have been our refuge and have created for us a wondrous planet to live in. Strengthen our stewardship that our care for your creation and all that is in it might result in it we continuing to be our refuge for generations. In your mercy, O Lord. Hear our prayer. O God, the world leaders and politicians are fleeting, but your truth and wisdom remains. May all those in power faithfully serve their constituents, that peace and the good of all continually to be on the forefront of their minds and work. We offer a special prayer for Soliana Emmanuel that she be able to begin the journey into Canada and safety, in spite of the difficulties of this pandemic. In your mercy, O Lord. Hear our prayer. O God, we do not put trust in the temporary or set our hearts on the fleeting, but we set our minds on the power of your love that speaks into our lives and hearts, even in times of trouble. Be with those among us who are sick, who mourn or who feel lonely that your everlasting promises might always lead and guide us all into hope. We pray especially for Paula, Viola, Ron Tessimenico, Bev and family, Laura, Candy, Thomas, Cindy, Linda, Henry, 
those who have contracted or been affected by COVID-19, and all those we name aloud quietly in our hearts at this time. In your mercy, O Lord, hear our prayer. O God, your love is steadfast, and you prove that in your welcome of all your children to live with you in eternity. May this promise bring calm to our spirits, that we may continue to stand for justice for all and see each other as a companion in our pilgrimage until we are reunited with you and all the saints in your kingdom. In your mercy, O Lord. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your wisdom and guidance, seen in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. As we just shared peace virtually, you may share peace uh, physically with those in your homes or virtually as well with the others who are watching the service with you at the same time through whatever means you have in front of you as we prepare our hearts for communion. Let's pray. O God, our rock and salvation, we together celebrate our salvation with the breaking of bread, reminding us of your welcome, your inclusion, and your providence for us all. May this food before us be blessed, that while we are still apart, we can feel the connection with you and each other through this body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and gracious God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls us to serve and act justly in your name and joins us with the choirs of angels, the hosts of heaven, and the church on earth, in praising you with this unending hymn.
God, we wait for you in silence as our hope is in you. For you alone are our rock and salvation, our stronghold that shall never be shaken. You honor us with your deliverance as our strong rock and refuge. Our trust is in you, and as the things of this world are fleeting and pass away, but your word of grace and peace lasts forever, and your love is steadfast. This is shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to us as one of us, to teach us your truth and justice and forgiveness. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat with his friends for a meal, took some bread, gave you thanks for it, then broke and shared it and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after they ate, he took the cup, gave thanks and shared it, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. It is by this bread and cup that we remember your love and grace, even as we together proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. May your justice shine throughout the lands, O God, and may your mercy reign in all our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Called into one body by the Holy Spirit, let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see God's love and grace. i
peace. Believe in God's call for your life. Time has come, the time has come, the time has come.